Good morning, folks. We're going to be rocking the foundations of science a bit today. We had part three in our series come out last night. We've got plasma filaments dancing around the limbs here, so let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day with the southern coronal holes and active region turning through center longitudes. On the left, we see the brightness from the incoming active region, and indeed, it is still on the limb, making its way in. The south-central spot is still technically alive as the lead umbra remains, but the rest has decayed. Incoming spot has at least one umbra, but is also plainly another small region, so we're on to earthquakes. Two big ones the last day, 6.2 in Indonesia, and the exact bigger rumble we were concerned with in yesterday's morning show at Puerto Rico. Saw three observers nail this one in their forecasting. Good work. It was just a few hours ago, so details are coming in, but there is damage. Folks, science articles are a bit of a visual splendor today, almost all of them, and we're starting with W first. It's going to be delivering a comparable light point mapping capability to TESS, and the number of stars and distant galaxies it's set to reveal is going to come ever closer to eliminating the blackness from the night sky. Even if our eyes don't see it that way, W first just might. That's exactly what they're hoping for. Up next, further examinations of the Crab Nebula and in different wavelengths. Multiple visible wavelengths actually revealing different elements. Infrared from dust and synchrotron radiation. X-rays from the powerful central star. In fact, they have made an animation in 3D of the nebula and central pulsar. It's got a cosmic jet there in the middle. And indeed, they go back through and add the other wavelengths while spinning the model. Many guesses and presumptions, of course, in this one, but alas, the actual nebula probably does indeed look something very close to this in 3D. Up next, a bit more substance. A new repeating fast radio burst has been discovered in a galaxy only 500 million light years away, and that's a major problem for the hypotheses on what creates these bursts. While the galaxy hosting the blast has a boring and nondescript catalog name, it may be about to get some more attention going into the future. Fast radio bursts are not supposed to be seen so close by, and it tells them that they may have the trigger for these bursts all wrong, even in their trying to find just one explanation. Wink. Up next, in general, this is how they think a block of the universe progressed. Material coalesces at the beginning, clumps, triggers, ionizes, and eventually melts away the thicker, cold, unclumped gases. Well, that first bit where things reionize and the universe begins to look more like it does now is home to a trio of galaxies in a cluster they say is about as far back as you can get to see them. The more they find those massive objects very early on, the harder it is to explain with Big Bang cosmology, since there wouldn't have been enough time for them to coalesce. This was an enormous portion of the plasma cosmology movie, by the way, with Dr. Fulvio Melia delivering that portion. And now we'll take a moment to come back to our large-scale magnetic fields comment yesterday. There was one comment reply claiming we don't know for sure that there are primordial magnetic fields. It was likely a dark matter scientist who found their way on the channel. But alas, that is false. And this is just the latest to come in with a limit and restraint conclusion definitively showing there are primordial fields still pervading the universe today, let alone eons ago. Folks, now things get fun. Because in his latest examination of the stupendous claims of a black hole image, Dr. Robitaille took it to another level last night, even naming the video Data Fabrication Masterclass, a strong accusation and a nice jab at Masterclass too. But most importantly, he shows how the data they claim to have is actually impossible based on their own viewing schedule. Some of the interferometer components were not even operating at the times when they are said to be used for calibration. He showed that they went more than a thousand times further than their instrumentation would allow. And folks, I definitively state that the only chance that black hole image has of standing the test of time is if they completely ignore the facts in Dr. Robitaille's video. Last but not least, two plasma nuclei walk into a galaxy cluster. Seriously though, the wording of black hole in this one will need to be tempered by your existing plasma and electric understanding. It is just a word. And what's interesting is this group was thought to be three black holes in a line, three plasma nuclei, but it's just two, with a third between them, actually being a plasma stream going from one to the other. They say it is indeed a connection stream. They have no idea how it got there or how the quote, random outflows of these objects came together. Maybe it's not random, but a direct plasma connection, electromagnetic fields, 
a Birkeland-like system. And no, folks, nothing in mainstream science allows black holes to play catch. We greatly appreciate your support. Dr. Robitaille does too. Check out his latest major debunking. And don't forget about part three of the solar plasma climate forcing. Need to stay caught up as that series is going to progress more later in the week. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.